And so it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce, well, I don't need to introduce Andrew, uh, but to, to introduce his talk about uh, molecular dynamics visualization by a stereoscopic view. And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So uh, this talk is about a, uh, a tool that we've developed called the uh, Molecular Dynamics Visualization, or MDV, and uh, it, it um, allows uh, molecular stru structure and interactions to be visualized um, in stereoscopic 3D using the Unity Game Engine. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my uh, um, uh, co-authors, uh, particularly Michael Wybrands, who did, or Wybrands, I should say, who did most of the development, Chris Malachek and uh, Ricardo Mancera, who um, are from the biomedical, um, medical, biomedical, medical, sorry, biomedical area, <laughs> um, and uh, Andrew Oll from the Department of Chemistry at, uh, at Curtin. A um, little bit of history there here. The, um, um, one, of, one, of the, uh, one of the team did his PhD at Oxford in the... Uh, late 80s, early 90s, and uh, he initially started doing molecular visualisation with these tools. Um, the item on the left is a Graphicon GE1700, and you can see that the, uh, the graphics here are a little bit rudimentary, but uh, interestingly it's got a stylus and some various input techniques. And uh, the item on the right is an Evans and Sutherland PS390, um, which has a mouse, and again, fairly rudimentary um, graphics, but uh, um, Andrew Roll was saying that these were absolutely critical for him to be able to conduct his research and uh, analyse the, uh, the 3D structures. So moving forward to today, there's just a slight difference between then and now, and uh, this is um, one of the displays that we've got in the, the, the visualisation facility we run at Curtin called The Hive. And, uh, um, we've got four different systems in the, uh, the space, and, and my feeling is this is the most impressive one. It's a three metre high screen, uh, cylindrical in nature, um, 180 degree field of view from the apex with an eight metre diameter. Uh, it can be viewed in stereoscopic 3D using shutter glasses. Um, it uses three projectors to, to fill the screen, uh, or warp blended to provide a, a, a single continuous view. And uh, we can fit 15 to 20 people um, standing in front of the display, and we can fit 50 if uh, they're seated in front of the display. So it's, it's a really great uh, group visualisation tool. So in terms of um, molecular simulation, um, specifically of biomedical structure and interactions, um, the, the tool that we've been using um, allows us to study the structure, function, and interactions of biomolecules. Um, now, the, molecular, the detailed molecular motion and forces are calculated with supercomputers um, over timescales ranging from picoseconds to microseconds. Um, knowledge of the position and velocity of every atom across time allows the prediction of every possible molecular and bulk property. Um, molecular mechanisms in biology can be elucidated by combining computation and visualisation. Now, the, um, the 3D immersive display of molecular structure and interactions is essential to understand how biology and chemistry work at the molecular level. And with regards to the, uh, the tool we've developed, which we've called MDV, um, the 3D molecular graphics built in, built, uh, sorry, are built on the Unity game engine. Um, it reads output files from a range of molecular dynamics simulation tools. Um, it can work with large-scale, multi-user stereoscopic visualisation systems, such as the, the Hive cylinder I showed you before, and uh, uh, does that um, delivering a, an extremely immersive um, display experience to an audience, or an individual for that matter. Um, so it allows research and, and teaching in fields of biology, chemistry, and also physics. So a little bit of background on protein structures first. Um, Proteins are found in all cells and tissues in our body, from muscle to hair to nearly every microscopic structure in our cells. They carry out an impressive range of functions, from catalyzing biochemical reactions to acting as antibodies or drug receptors to supporting the structure of cells. 
Now, they are made of amino acids, which is the, uh, the item on the, uh, the left here, and um, uh, which then join together to form long chains. Oops. All right, let's change that back. There we go. Um, they join to go get together to form long chains, um, which, uh, you know, form proteins. The 3D structure of proteins is, however, very complex and is responsible for their function. Um, the way amino acids in a protein chain interact locally gives rise to a number of well-characterised 3D structures referred to as secondary structures, which is these items on the right-hand side, um, such as alpha helices, uh, which is the top blue one, alpha helix, and um, the beta sheet, which is the, the item shown on the bottom right. And the 3D representation of proteins needs to be able to clearly show how these secondary structures and um, how, they can how they change can provide useful information about their structure and interactions. Now, a little bit of an insight into how we've, we've done that. I mentioned we've, we've been using Unity. The input um, files for the, um, the tool, uh, I mean, I come out of a... Um, a molecular dynamic simulation, and uh, that's a text file which looks a little bit like this. In the Unity game engine, uh, it consists of a range of different um, um, modules or subroutines, ranging from input passes to uh, um, uh, bits of code that actually display and present the different types of uh, items displayed on screen. Um, so the Unity engine makes use of uh, Visual Studio and C Sharp internally, and we've also been using a, a, a plugin called Middle VR to achieve the uh, stereoscopic display on our large cylindrical display. And uh, the um, the end result is uh, what's shown here. But now let's uh, um, switch across to the video projection. Lights out? Yeah, why not? So grab your 3D glasses, your polarised ones. And now we're going to launch the application. Now this is a, a, a pre-record because this is the only way I could uh, manage to do this without while uh, talking at the same time. And also do it in 3D. So we start out with a, um, um, a ball structure which allows us to confirm that the, uh, the 3D is operating correctly. Uh, down on the left here is an icon which we can use to bring up the user interface. The user interface is a 3D object in 3D space, so when that comes up, we'll see that uh, it, uh, well, at the moment it looks as though it's just uh, a menu that sits on the top of the screen. We can move around the 3D space, we can even move within the object. Let's move back out again. So the first thing when you want to do is load a model. We're just going to use a fairly simple... Now, fortunately, the user interface was playing up while we were doing this, so it's a little bit jumpy. So just to fairly simple model first and we're just going to turn on the turn on the elements we've got full control over a range of different items within the scene and there we go we also turn on the bounding box and we can also turn on the uh, just a basic rotation here we go Turn that bounding box off. We'll just have a little bit of a closer look. The detail is selectable. Um, it's a fairly low resolution render at the moment, but we can turn it up so that the, uh, um, the, the atoms are shown with a little bit more detail. Um, the menu is, is dockable, so we can just put it in 3D space and just put it off to the side, away from the, uh, the molecule so it doesn't block your view. And here we're just getting that uh, all adjusted correctly. 
Then there's a range of different things we can do. So the, the next thing I think we're going to do is turn on the secondary structure. Oh, here we go, turning off the atoms, turning off the bonds. We can also turn on and off and activate, activate various uh, um, other items such as residues or the main chain of the protein. And here we've got the, uh, the secondary structures. So the, the red, I think, is the... Just check my notes here. Yes, the red is the beta sheets and the yellow is the coils. Um, what was being shown there is we can selectively turn... Oh, actually, here we go. We can selectively turn on uh, different elements which also takes off the relevant bonds when they're turned off. And we've also got the, uh, the ability to turn off different uh, types of residues within the protein as well. And what we're going to show in a second is highlighting a particular protein. So here we're going to change the colour of a particular protein, sorry, a particular residue which then highlights that particular part of the, uh, the protein. So it's coming a little bit closer to that, I think. All right. All right, so we're going to now load a trajectory file, which is, is, which is uh, essentially an animation file. reset the uh, different colour of the residues. And then we can hit play and see how the structure moves and interacts. All right, so now we can also, let's have a look at the, uh, the secondary structure which reveals a little bit more about uh, the nature of the, uh, the protein as it, uh, as it moves. So as it twists and uh, turns, different parts of the structure um, sort of enable the, the beta sheet and the coil uh, structures, secondary structures. It's almost mesmerising as it twists and turns around, isn't it? <coughs> All right, so let's load up a more complicated model now. So let's just readjust our view, get that in the centre of the scene, start rotating it around, and we can turn on. So this is around 35,000 atoms, 35,000 bonds, so about 70,000 objects within the scene. What is it? Um, I forget what this one was. I meant to take a note and I didn't. <laughs> If you say so, Eustace, I believe you. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> some people have that power. Yeah, so we can dive through and have a closer look at various items within the, uh, within the structure. We can turn on and off various items within the scene.
So we can also adjust the, the type of lighting, shadows, lighting, and the, the ground plane. It changes the nature of the, uh, the display. Perhaps it might not be as quite as uh, realistic in some ways, but uh, it might be more realistic in others. So this one being loaded now is a lipid structure. And we also need to load the animation as well. Here we're showing the uh, um, the visualization with it with slightly different settings. So this is all simulation again. Um, it's not uh, observation of a, a real item, but it's simulation for accuracy. Eventually, they merge. All right, at that, um, there's a little bit more information, a little bit more uh, um, data that we um, did load, but at this stage, I might uh, bring the lights up and take questions. And this will also be on show during the demonstration session, which I believe is just through this wall. <laughs> <laughs>